Hello gamers and welcome back to Hapog Gaming Tutorials Volume 2. I'm Fallen Frog and this time we're going to cover notifications like follower alerts and donation alerts for your Twitch stream. All right, so our scene is looking really good. We've got, you know, we've got something there from when we're getting started. Uh, we've got our gameplay set up. We've got, you know, be right back. And then we've even got a, we set up a, uh, a new scene so that we could do like a podcast or something just like we do over on, over on uh, Hapog Gaming. Now what we're going to do, uh, we're going to add notification alerts to our gameplay scene. This is a way if while we're playing the game someone hits the follow button, uh, they'll be rewarded with a special treat on the screen. Um, or if we get a donation, you know, we can say thank you in a special way with, you know, by having their name show up and letting everyone know how awesome they are for, you know, supporting the stream. Uh, that's what we're going to be doing today. And in order to do that, I'm going to I'm going to minimize OBS here a little bit and just bring it over to the side. Uh, we're going to be using a service called Twitch Alerts. Uh, if you just go to twitchalerts.com, uh, you can connect your Twitch account to their service completely free uh, and start using that for uh, all your notifications. Uh, it's really simple to get set up. It's really easy. Uh, and it, they just, I love the way their, their whole site is set up and how they, how they manage things. So that's why I'm going to show you this today. Uh, we're going to go ahead and, and launch Twitch Alerts. I'm going to right click and do this in an incognito window. Uh, the reason I'm doing it in, in an incognito window is because uh, it'll show you what it's like if you're not signed in or if it's your first time. So uh, you can see Twitch Alerts connect with Twitch. Uh, if you've never connected with Twitch before, you've got to log in to your account, and then you will choose to authorize your account. So I'm going to use Frogsbot because I don't want to use uh, my personal channel. Uh, you know, I've already got my notifications set up how I like them. Um, so we're gonna, we're instead, we're gonna set up Frogsbot's notifications. So you just log into your uh, Twitch account like you normally would. Uh, and then it's going to pop up a screen that says, do you authorize Twitch Alerts apps uh, to have access to your profile? And it's just going to basically allow Twitch Alerts to see when you get a new noti uh, notification, such as a new follower, new donation, subscription, uh, anytime anyone is hosting you, you'll be able to see all that. Uh, over here is the dashboard, and this is what you'll first see when you do launch Twitch Alerts. Uh, if you've streamed recently be able to see your progress if you've had new followers new notifications anything like that uh, subscriptions donations and followers uh, and then you know what how much you've been donated recently uh, you can go through and uh, look at all these you know these settings on your own at uh, your own point I'm just going to show you the alert box today uh, this is the most important one for what we need so we're going to hit we're going to go into the alert box uh, and then this is where you'll set up all of your notifications so they have spots, uh, so you have your general alert settings, and this will be applied to uh, each one of your Twitch alerts. So uh, your follow alert, you know, this is the background color for all of those. Uh, the, uh, the delay, so the delay is, you know, how long it takes before, uh, you know, when someone hits the follow button, how long it takes before it sends that to Twitch alerts to, to notify you. Uh, and then the layout. So the way this layout is represented here, this first option we have an image, above text. Uh, the second option is just text. So it could say, you know, the, the, the viewer's name and then, you know, whatever your message is. And then the third one is a smaller image next to the text as well. And they'll be side by side as opposed to being top and bottom. Uh, you do get a bigger image if you do top and bottom. So this is just really up to personal preference. Uh, I'm going to go, I'm going to stick with image on top, text on the bottom because I like the way it looks. Uh, the background color uh, won't really be too important uh, unless you choose to skip the CLR browser plugin. Uh, I'm going to talk about that here in just a moment. But uh, what you'll be doing, there's two ways to get your alerts uh, through Twitch Alerts into OBS. So one of those ways is with a window capture. So if you click this launch button, what it does is it launches a web page that Twitch Alerts sets for you. Uh, hold on, let me save these settings real quick because I changed my background color. Uh, okay, so here we have these. I've saved my settings. We hit launch. <laughs> it didn't save my settings. <laughs> Give me that green. Give me that green. 
There we go. Okay, we're good. So it launches that web page. Uh, this web page is right here. Here's the link. So you can bookmark it. Uh, you can, you know, anytime you're gonna, if you're gonna window capture this and use this for your alerts, you will need to have this window open. So that's why they have the handy launch button there. It just pops it up. Uh, what you would do is you, while you were streaming, you would have this running uh, in the background somewhere and you would just window capture it and bring it into your scene. So if we do a window capture, hit OK. <clears throat> uh, you make sure you choose your alert box widget uh, for the window. Inner window, you probably don't want mouse cursor again. Uh, and then your subregion, you would just select your region. So uh, the only thing we need to do is just bring this down underneath our address bar and then we can hit enter and then hit OK. And what it does is it brings this web page into our scene in OBS. Now, uh, if we want to test this, uh, first let's make sure we have something set up for follower alert. So we can test our follower alert. Uh, we can test our subscriptions, donations, and hosting uh, all through here. So if we go down here to follower alerts, we can see uh, you know a bunch of different options. We can enable and disable the alerts altogether. So if you you know if you uh, if you have someone griefing your channel and they're using you know a bunch of uh, you know hateful racist names or something like that and you're tired of them showing up and you don't you know you don't want to stop streaming uh, by all means disable them you know take away their power um, you can change the template so you know I said there was uh, image and then text on the bottom this is going to be your text so you can change it to have whatever you want. By default, it will say whatever the viewer's name is, is now following. But you can change that. On my channel, it says latest awesome follower, colon, and then their name. So uh, it's it's really up to you however you want to personalize that. Just wherever you want their name to be, you need those curly braces. And then open and close parentheses with name in the middle of it. And then Twitch alerts will put their name in for you. You don't have to worry about it. Uh, if you go to rubber band, uh, this rubber band option I have, this is the text animation. So uh, while the text, when it pops up, you can have it, you know, doing something like bouncing or doing a little wave or, uh, you know, you don't have to have it do anything, but, you know, just something to make the, an the text animated and pop out a little bit. Uh, and then you can also use your image and sound. So uh, it will display an image if you want it to, um, and you can upload your own images. Uh, or you can uh, copy the link to an image and you can use an image that you know an animated gif over on Giphy or uh, you know anything like that or any image that you you want to use uh, if you have it on the web you can use the link you can upload it directly uh, or you can select from the gallery and they have all these little these little sprite based uh, images that you can choose from uh, pretty fun let's just go with Spongebob here yeah, this one. Uh, we're going to grab that, and it's going to basically, whenever we get a new follower, SpongeBob will be there, and then it'll have our text. Uh, you can also choose a sound. You can upload your own sounds to use, or you can just select from the gallery. Uh, and they have all kinds of different sounds here that you can choose. And you can preview them. So when you click on it, it'll preview it. You choose a sound that you like. I'm going to go with, yeah, this one. Uh, you can change the volume of the sound, so you want to be considerate of all of your viewers. You don't want, you know, some loud uh, screaming goat at full volume. You know, that's going to deafen everybody. But uh, so you have some control there, and then the duration. So this is how long your follower alert. Just this is all specific to follower alerts right here uh, on this tab. You'll you'll just choose how long it stays on the screen. You know, the duration. Uh, if you want to go into your font settings for your text, you can go down here as well. Uh, and change the font, you can change the size and weight, and the color, uh, and the highlights. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and change my highlights to, uh, uh, actually I'm gonna change the highlight to white. I'm gonna change our text color itself uh, to, to a darker red because that's what we're using on our channel uh, in OBS right now. So make sure it's saved, it did save my settings, okay. so. Now let's go ahead and test a follower alert. So if we hit test follow, uh, it should show up. And we should actually see that show up in this widget box that we are capturing into OBS. So let's just make sure that shows up. 
and it does take about 30 seconds uh, once you queue it up before it actually does start showing up so uh, just just be patient and it will uh, it will show up there it is now we obviously don't want the green background um, so since we don't have any green in our image we can go ahead and we can go ahead and comfortably remove that color so let's go into our window capture right click and go to properties and we're going to select color key use color key and then uh, you can pick the color from the box or you can just hit select and click right there uh, that grabs that sp specific color and then you hit OK and let's let's test that again and just see let's just make sure uh, and see it you know side by side we'll be able to see one version uh, you know in front of our game and then we'll be able to see one on the windows over there as well and you will do the same thing for donations subscriptions and uh, hosting so anytime someone hosts you uh, you can use different images for each one that's what I use I use a I have two different images uh, one for when I get a new follower uh, one for when I get a new donation and there you go now there's a little bit of we we would want to mess with the similarity and you know our our chroma key settings here if we go into uh, you know our properties we'd want to play with the similarity and the blend a little bit just to get that just perfect uh, if we were going to do the window capture mode because there was some some green in the text it, you know it was just a little bit distracting there is another way though there is another way we don't have to window capture this uh, we can hit, I'm just going to go ahead and hit cancel and I'm going to remove this altogether. I'm just going to remove our window capture of of our alerts box uh, because honestly, it's uh, I would rather use the CLR browser because we don't have to have that that window popped up and open the entire time we're streaming if we're using the browser. So I'm going to hit close. And how to get the CLR browser and how to get it installed, uh, you can find all of that information right here by clicking CLR browser plugin. They provide you with exactly where you need to go, which is obs.com. It's over on the forums. And uh, just to save you all the trouble of having to read all of this, uh, what you'll want to do is you'll want to install either the 32-bit or the 64-bit version, uh, depending on what system you have. You will All you will do is just download. Uh, once you click on this, it will download it. Uh, if you, I'm going to minimize this just so you can see right here. You, know, you can see right here it's downloading over there uh, in my Chrome. When it's done, uh, what you'll want to do is go into your C drive on your computer, go into Program Files, go down to OBS, go into your Plugins folder, and then once that's downloaded, you'll just drag this into here, and you'll extract you'll extract those into your Plugins folder. And what it's going to give you is I've already got it done over here. I've got it. I've got the what I, you know what was downloaded from here. Um, I've already got it brought in over here into my folder, and then it's been extracted, and I have my CLR CLR host plugin right there. You can see uh, that's where my CLR plugin is. So just go ahead and extract those into that folder, and then you'll you'll be good to go. Now, one thing to one thing that I do need to mention uh, that is mentioned right here. And let me go ahead and make this full screen because it's that important. Uh, you do need to update your Microsoft Visual Studios uh, C++ runtimes. So uh, if those aren't updated to at least 2013, make sure you do that. You can get that at the link over there. Uh, and then you also need to upgrade your .NET framework. Your .NET installation needs to be at 4.5.x. So uh, 4.5 whatever or or later so make sure you've got those updated uh, if you haven't already chances are you probably will you probably won't run into any problems with that uh, but if you do you can find all of that information right here uh, and once again that's just right above your alert alert token link so you can find the browser the browser plugin right there it takes you right over to OBS and that's all in OBS's support so if you have any problems you can uh, you can find those over there. You can hit us up in the comments or you know, send a tweet over to myself or Hapog. We'll be happy to help. Uh, once you've done that, you can go in and add a CLR browser. Uh, let's just name this Alert. 
and right here where it's URL instead we're just going to copy this right click copy uh, we're gonna copy this URL because this is our twitch alerts URL bring this back over into OBS paste we're gonna hit OK and you can change the dimensions of course if you want as well I'm just gonna resize it and bring it bigger make it uh, bring it to the middle here and uh, let's let's go with the donation alert this time so let's go to our donation alert tab and see what we have over there uh, we're going to you know you can enable it you can have text-to-speech so uh, twitch alerts will do a text-to-speech thing that I've not played with very much but uh, if anybody if you know when you know someone donates to you they can leave a message and you can actually have it be read out loud on your stream uh, and choose the language you can have a minimum amount that someone needs to donate. Uh, I, I would recommend against that. You know, let, let people donate whatever they're comfortable with, really. Uh, would be my best piece of advice as far as that goes. Uh, you can have a message template. So here we have name, donated, amount. So it'll, it'll say what their name is, donated, and then show the amount that they actually donated. So I'm going to leave that just like that. But once again, you can customize that as much as you want. Just make sure to have the curly brackets for the curly brackets, parentheses, and then amount or name if you want to have Twitch alerts plug those in for you. Uh, then you have the text animations as well. Uh, we can do an image or a sound as well again. So let's go into our gallery and let's choose something different for you know for when we get a new donation. So I'm gonna go with the star, the Mario star. Uh, and then for a sound, magic coins, why not? Uh, we'll go with that. You can, of course, do the volume and the duration. Uh, and you also have other options for the donator message settings and then the font settings as well. Uh, let's just go ahead and hit save. Now, because we're using the CLR browser plugin, we don't have to worry about doing a chroma key. It's going to take care of all of that for us. So now that we've saved our settings, let's go ahead and queue up our test donation. And let's just pull up OBS. Uh, we don't have the we don't have the pop-up window open anymore. We don't need it open up anymore because now it just shows up on our stream. Uh, this is just a test donation too, so it didn't, didn't add $92 to my account. But that's a great way to see what it, uh, you know, to test it out and make sure everything, everything works great. And that is that. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I thought there might be something else I needed to cover, but uh, that's so we've you know you can do it one of two ways. Uh, just to recap, you can open up you know launch your window and then do a screen capture a window capture of this and just chroma key out your background, uh, or if you want to just down uh, install the CLR browser plugin, copy this link, and just plug that into OBS right into the CLR browser plugin source. Pretty simple stuff. If you guys have any questions, uh, do feel free to you know hit us up in the comments and let us know, uh, and we'll be glad to help you out. So thanks for watching. See you next time. Hey, before you go, if you want to see the previous video where I cover how to green screen, you can click up there. And if you want to see more of me, click over here to go to Fallen Frog. Thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you next time.